again, everyone. I have had some requests to talk about, uh, or illustrate rather, what it means when I say uh, core watercolors are pushy. So uh, I'm actually gonna do that demonstration today, and I'm actually gonna include another watercolor that I also feel like is pushy. <laughs> um, so I have two core watercolors in this larger palette here. I have, um, they're right in here, I have core, green gold, and then I have core cobalt teal. So I'm gonna be testing those with some of the other colors, um, basically mixing them together to show you how one pushes the other around. The core color pushes the other colors around. And then I also have, it just happens to be right next to each other, uh, I also have a Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow. And Nickel Azo, Azo Yellow as a color also tends to be fairly pushy. Um, and I'm not quite sure what that is because pretty much any brand that I use of Nickel Azo Yellow has that effect regardless of the formula. So with the core paints, I believe that the reaction that happens when it interacts with other watercolors, it happens because of the, um, the base of the watercolor. They're using uh, Aquazol, which is their own special formula uh, in place of something like... Um, like gum arabic, I suppose. But they also have a uh, synthetic ox gall that they're using, and ox gall is also very pushy. If you add ox gall to other colors, it is going to push other brands of watercolor and other colors away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fairly wet circle here of a color that is not core <laughs> and is not this nickel azo yellow, and then I am going to show you, I'm gonna touch the core colors and the nickel azo yellow up to that other color so that you can see how it pushes that other color around. And then I'm also gonna do it with some other colors so you can see that um, the other colors will not do that. So what I'm gonna use is sort of my control, my control groups are uh, Daniel Smith and Schmincke watercolors. So I'm gonna do both a Daniel Smith and a Schmincke and then use all three of those colors on it in addition to another couple of colors to show you that they don't do that. That may have been kind of confusing how I said that, but maybe you'll see once I have started. <laughs> um, and here's my little color guide for what I have in here. I'm gonna keep that off camera just because um, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And there's just not, there's just simply not enough room for all of that. So I'm gonna work on this page here. This is Pentallic sketchbook paper. Um, this is a Pentelic sketchbook, and I find that that's a pretty good paper for testing things out, even though it's not 100% cotton. And so the brushes that I'm gonna be using today, um, this is a Rosemary & Co. R23 Snowdrop, number eight. Um, this, is gonna, this is what I'm gonna be using as my round brush today to paint the circles, and then to push the paint into the circles, I'm gonna be using this little chisel blender, number eight, from Princeton Velvet Touch. Um, and I found that if you kind of, um, this is this is only a practical matter so that you can actually see. So I'll, uh, I'll like brush the color into it with this so it can be fairly fairly even spreading as opposed to what I might get with the, the round brush. So, and I have to do this fairly quickly because the uh, circle needs to remain wet. So I have not decided what colors I'm going to use yet. I think I'm going to use, um, I think I'm gonna use the, uh, let's see, because I wanna use similar colors of both the Schmincke and the Daniel Smith. So let's use the Schmincke Gold Brown color, and um, that is over here in this little well. And then I am going to use, I have so many Daniel Smiths to choose from, so let's see. Uh, let's use the Daniel Smith Sap Green. I, I'll actually use some different colors. So Daniel Smith Sap Green and Schmincke Gold Brown. So that way you should be able to see. I'm actually gonna do the Daniel Smith first. So let's go ahead and put down a really wet, so I'm gonna make this really super wet because um, that way you'll be able to see it better. And I'm trying to pick colors. I actually might change my Schmincke color because I want colors where you can actually see the color that's gonna be going into it. So I wanna make it fairly saturated, but I also wanna make it 
fairly wet. So I'm adding more water here. Okay, now I'm gonna really quickly with my square brush, go into the core gold or green gold, which may be a little harder to see. And I wanna make sure that that is about the same consistency because it's not about the consistency, it's about the color itself. So I'm gonna put that there and then I'm gonna to touch it there. So you can kind of see it's bleeding into that color. And now I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna rinse off my brush, make sure, because that, that's a pretty staining color. Don't wanna make sure there's any more there. And then I'm gonna do the same, make sure it's um, the same consistency with the core cobalt teal. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna push it up to the edge. So you can see that is already doing that as well. And then I'm gonna do this with the Azo Yellow, Nickel Azo Yellow, which is actually by Daniel Smith, but you will see that it has a similar effect. So it's starting to dry out. And then I'm gonna do another Daniel Smith color. Let's just go with French Ultramarine. So, because I have so much of it here. Let's go with French Ultramarine. Make sure that is the same consistency. And then I'm gonna push that up to there and you can totally, well, let's see, I'm gonna do that a little bit further in because it did dry out. Okay, but you'll see the green is actually pushing into the blue, whereas these three other colors, they pushed into the Daniel Smith color. Because as you can see, like the green is actually coming out here and you're not getting any green in these little swatches here um, for the squares, but you can definitely, here I'll put it a little closer, you can see that the green is creeping up into the blue, okay? Same is not true for these, you're getting blooms. Essentially that's what it does, it blooms into the color. And actually nickel azo yellow seems to be doing it even more than the core colors. So let's see, let's, um, cause I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to pick some something contrasting Actually, let's go with Schmincke Paraline Violet because that will probably give you a better contrast. So, and again, because I have, I have such a dry environment here, things dry so, so fast. So I have to make sure that I give it, give it a lot of water so that we can see that effect happening. Okay, so this is the Schmincke Paraline Violet. And I'm gonna do the exact same colors on this one. So let's, I'm gonna go a little faster. I'm gonna do the um, green gold. Oh wow, and you really see that with that one, probably because it's a wetter mix. And then I'm gonna do that with the cobalt violet. Yeah, that just took off. <laughs> okay. And now I'm gonna do that with the Nickel Azo Yellow. Again, same reaction. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the Daniel Smith French Ultramarine as the contrast. And see, I put it right up to it and it's still, it's pushing, it's actually pretty wet there, but, um, but see, it's pushing back into that color, whereas these are pushing the, the color within this circle. I think the um, cobalt teal is getting a little lost just because of the color, but it is still going up in there. Let me show this to you closer. Okay, so see, you're seeing, um, and this is not because I'm tilting the paper. Um, I mean, it is a little wet on that side, but if you, you know, you saw me touch to the wet part and it did not bloom out into that circle at all with the um, Daniel Smith uh, Ultramarine Blue. And same is true here. I tried to get it further in because I, my circle had dried a little bit, but again, there's no bloom at the end here. The, the bloom is the green going into the blue. So it's basically which colors are gonna push which colors which way. So if you're using core, which are these two, you're, you're almost always gonna have this kind of reaction with, uh, if, if you're using a brand other than core paints, because um, it just, 
you know, it's just going to push it away. So, um, and then with the nickel azo yellow, like I said, I really don't know what it is. I, I it must be something related to the pigment itself because, um, the pigment itself across brands seems to have this effect. And obviously ultramarine blue is not a pushy color because whatever you're putting into it could end up going that way. Now there, there's like a, a, a ton of different permeations, right? You could have a color that pushes ultramarine blue, or you could have a, a color that ultramarine, ultramarine blue pushes. Um, but you're, you're pretty much consistently going to get a push away from the core colors with different brands. Um, the core colors together, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag as to what pushes what, and sometimes they don't, they're not pushy at all with themselves, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I hope this showed accurately what I'm talking about as far as uh, colors being pushy. So um, I think I'm going to just stop there because that, you know, those two examples showed you pretty much this was a contrasting color to pretty much everything I used. And then this one, although it's fairly similar, you can still see the bloom coming in from all of those colors and the bloom going out. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope you found that useful. Feel free to like and or subscribe so that you can keep track of future videos. And I will hopefully see you next time. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.